why it is that you recall this place. You must be weak of heart. Each time I speak, it scares you so. Do you think you can lie to me? It saddens me to know you wish to hide such things from me. Well, anyhow, I am quite fascinated by this place. As far as I can tell, this is your first time here. How very odd. I wonder if somehow my memories have... Hmm. I must admit I am unsure. Beyond the name and the strange feeling of familiarity, I can't seem to remember anything about this place. And yet, a great depth of emotions tied to that sense of familiarity. Like joy and sorrow, pain and love, and all things in between. If I was somehow here before, I wonder what took place. Professor, I was wondering where you were. It's about time we headed back to the monastery. It is time to depart. But know that time reveals all things. One day I will remember that which I have lost. Oh, by the way, it seems you've earned my gratitude. The thieves who came here are no more. I am not sure myself, yet I am grateful all the same. In any case, you must become accustomed to my voice. If you fall down with shock each time I speak, that just won't do. Oh, you think you're standing strong? <laughs> of course you are. It was a jest. On our way out, I had the chance to observe the Red Canyon. Did you notice anything, Professor? Of course, I expected as much. The area was covered in ruins, each more curious than the last. They did not match the architectural style of any era or culture within the Empire, or across all of Fodland for that matter. That can only mean one thing. The Valley Civilization must have flourished and fallen in the distant past, long before the Empire was established. Who do you think lived there? <laughs> it's possible they weren't even human. Hmm, perhaps their remnants still influence this world. So you have safely disposed of those bandits. I pray that their souls find salvation. But why did they target the students to begin with? We must further investigate the true cause of all that took place. Until we know more, I ask that you support the students and relieve them of any unnecessary worry. Good. I have high expectations for you. By the way, how was your time in Xanadu? Legend has it, in ancient times, a goddess alighted upon this world in that very canyon. For a goddess from the heavens, Xanadu could only have been a temporary haven. Long ago, the Divine Seros received a revelation from the Goddess. A gift to help guide the lost. The Goddess is always watching over Fodlin from her kingdom above. However, in ancient times, the Goddess graced this world with her presence and offered salvation to the people here. She is the mother of all life, the arbiter of every soul. I see. During your time here, I pray that you come to devote yourself to the teachings of Seros. Uh, 
Lady Rhea, I am sorry to interrupt. There is something I must ask about in regard to those bandits. As you wish. We shall continue our discussion when next we meet. A goddess? I have no memory of her. But then, I have no memory at all. Oh, how bothersome. It is as though I know, and yet I don't. Perhaps Xanado was my home back when the goddess walked the land. If so, what does that make me now? A ghost? Hmm. No, that cannot be. I am most certainly alive. Of course, we also have the mystery of why I'm here with you. Is it somehow connected? Perhaps some past regret is stopping me from moving on. And now I'm forced to stay with you instead. No, that's not it. I can't believe in such a meaningless existence. I... Uh... <sighs> Part 1. White Clouds. Garland Moon. Mutiny in the Mist. When the warm winds blow from the sea to the south of Adrestia, residents of Fodlin know that the rainy season is upon them. Before the heavy rains take their toll, young women hurry to pick the last of the white roses. The ivory buds are woven into garlands and given as gifts to close friends or potential lovers. Professor, I have a new mission for your students. We have received reports that Lord Lonato has rallied troops against the Holy Church of Seros. Lord Lonato is a minor lord of the kingdom. He has been showing hostility toward the church for some time now. A vanguard unit from the Knights of Seros is already on its way to his stronghold, Castle Gaspar. Lord Lenato's army is nothing compared to the Knights. It is quite possible the Rebellion has already been suppressed. Even so, I would like for your class to travel with the Knights' rear guard to deal with the aftermath. War zones are unpredictable. We do not expect you will have cause to battle, but be prepared for the worst. Excuse me. You sent for me, Lady Rhea? This is Catherine. She will be leading the Knights whom you will be accompanying. Nice to meet you. We've heard a lot about you. If you need anything, just ask. She is one of our bravest knights, and that is no small feat. Only an exceptional few have what it takes to join the Knights of Seros. This mission should prove useful in demonstrating to the students how foolish it would be to ever turn their blades on the church. so much. Thank you. 
A new path to tread. As expected.
You have spent quite some time in here engaging in such idle chatter. Do you not know that we have not a moment left to waste? We must try harder from now on. We must try hard. What? I desired fresh air. Hm. I have a favor to ask. Hey, Professor, do you happen to have any food? No matter how much I eat before I train, my muscles must be going through a growth spurt. Good to see you, Professor. I was just on my way to train. Maybe. The plants of Fodlin are different and people here are unknowing of the spirits who watch over the earth and bless it. within the greenhouse are removed, 
They will soon wilt. I feel I can empathize with them. Flowers that thrive. Next month is when a very important ceremony will be taking place. Pilgrims from all corners of Fodland have already started to gather. I pray that you are able to nip this trouble. Hey there. Professor. Since we're heading to Castle Gaspar, the road is well known. Depending on the... Lucky for us, it shouldn't be too foggy while we're there. Professor. Professor, your clothes are a bit dirty. I'd have expected you to be more careful, seeing as how you're a professor and all. I hate when my clothes get dirty. That's one of the many reasons I find it best to train as little as possible. Yep. Hey, Professor. How's it going? Making lots of coin? I'd love to catch up, but I'm super busy right now. Working. For money. <laughs> you understand. Hey, Professor. Fancy meeting you here. I've got a business... Uh... I know you're busy with a lot of things, but heck, I won't even charge you for my aid. What say you? It's a killer deal. Thank you. Now I'll have plenty of time to get to know my client. A merchant needs to know the inner workings of everyone they come in contact with. Helps with the making of the monies, you know.
Good deal. What do you require? Do you want to hire this battalion? Leave it all to us. In the Battalion Guild, you can find various battalions that aren't affiliated with the Church of Seraphs. We're allowed to hire them if we so please, so you should familiarize yourself with the Guild whenever you have the chance. Naturally, battalions lose endurance as they fight. If you visit the Battalion Guild in the market, you'll be able to replenish their endurance. What do you require? Want to hire this battalion? Nice to meet you. Farewell. Welcome. This one? Thank you. This one? Thank you.
this one? Thank you. This one? This one? Thank you. This one? Thank you. Please come again. Welcome. Will this one do? Many thanks. Will this one do? Many thanks. Will this one do? Many thanks. This one do? Will this one do? Many thanks. This one do many things. Will this one do many things? 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 Come back soon. What? Greetings, Professor. Nothing to... Have you talked with Catherine yet? <laughs> if the knights are the cream of the crop, she's the cream of the cream. Oh, and that relic of hers. I hear it's nothing short of amazing. Professor, have you seen Felix around? I swear, as soon as you take your eyes off him, poof, he's gone. All right, it is mealtime. Thank you. 
Professor! Hello! Huh? Things we can't obtain here are likely obtainable by way of the underground. Are you unfamiliar with Garrig Mox Underground? The place is an absolute paradise for those who can't stay above ground. Train? You really are as hardworking as they say. Huh, maybe the gossip's wrong. Hardworking people usually don't like to make a big fuss about it. Even within the Knights of Saros, Catherine is the strongest. By a large margin from what I've gathered. Why not seek her out as a sparring partner, Professor? I have a favor to ask. Something about this situation doesn't feel right. Why would a minor lord raise an army against a foe he cannot possibly hope to defeat? Impressive. Catherine, hmm? Her skill is impressive, I'll admit. So is her sword. But I think she's hiding something. Nobody knows anything about her path. You should spar with her. She's strong. Stronger than you are, I bet. Join me for some training sometime. I might like to become your student someday. There's news of someone in the kingdom raising an the kingdom, the empire, the alliance. They do love a good war, don't they? Spilling the blood of young men and women. And for what? Just to enjoy the... Would you be so kind as to do me a favor?
I still have much to learn. I simply must thank you, Professor. Did you hear? The kingdom spilling. Professor, I heard that you may battle alongside even among the knights she is something special. A holy knight who is able to wield a hero's relic. Still, she can be a might difficult. Castle Gaspar, eh? I've been there once before, many years ago. It was by request of the son of that family. I have a request. Castle Gaspar, it was by request... has so many breathtaking works of art. Each piece can teach us about styles and techniques from a thousand years ago. Oh yes, very much. I'm from a family of merchants, so I've been able to see a lot of art. Ah, Professor, I'd like to learn more about you. Pointing a sword at the Holy Church, meeting out a probe as a member of the church yourself.
be. Thanks for your help. Professor. Professor, about this month's assignment. <clears throat> Raising an army against the church? Though it looks like we won't be... My understanding is that it will all be subdued rather quickly. Professor. Okay. I've heard whispers about Lord Renato. They say he's a very kind and gentle lord. Why, oh, Professor. You were working late last night, weren't you? A ghost might rise up from the well to get you if you stay up too late. Favor to ask of you. Oh, I'm already. Honest, I felt a bit lost here at the month. Thankfully, a sweet young girl reached out and offered her help. I believe she said it's little.
best be on your guard. Let's see, after Fargus lost its king, there were many rebellions. It is likely that Lord Lenato's provocations are related. How frustrating that I am too young to take the throne. Rendered powerless by age. We are truly blessed with how fertile the monastery grounds are. Every day, there's... Hi, Professor. I've actually got... are far too spread out. Feels like it takes... And no, that's not because I'm getting lost. I'm a fully capable, mature person who never gets lost. Yes, I'm actually very busy right now. Thank you so much for your help. What's going to happen? Maybe Lord Lenato. He used to stay at... He was such a pop, such a terrible shame. Professor! Here is the Holy Mausoleum. Sorry, but only a select few. It's open to the public on...
off. Ah, today's meal was delicious. Linhart keeps bothering me about eating too fast. Says I'm gonna choke or something. Absolutely! I knew you'd see... Yeah, that's definitely mine. You really saved me with this. I owe you one, Professor.
Professor, I feel I must speak to you about Kaspar's. I've never seen the like of it. He inhales entire plates of food in mere seconds. Hence my mentioning it to you. It's not mine. It's not mine. Have a moment, I would like a word. It has been brought to my attention that certain individuals have been making advances toward flame. Have you witnessed any such behavior? If you see anything similar in the future, please inform the perpetrators of their peril. I'm sorry to say. I'm sorry to say. I'm sorry, but I must vent to someone, Professor. You're familiar with Manuela's slovenly behavior, yes? That woman. She borrowed a book last week and returned it with stains of unknown origin on the cover and several pages either folded or torn. Just now, she dropped a sandwich on the floor, picked it up, and kept eating. When she saw my shock, she said simply, three-second rule. Ugh. I can't believe I left this behind. Oh, thank you. Bernadetta, why are you following me? Um. You were following me quite conspicuously, so why attempt to hide now? I... um... Um... Please don't hurt me! Calm yourself, I have no reason to harm you. Forgive me, I beg you! I'll go straight back to my room and you'll never see me again, I swear! Bernadetta. Yes, Lady Edelgard! Please explain why you were following me and why you tried to hide. Is Her Highness saying she will not condemn me? Please, speak like the human that you are. I already said no harm will come to you. Yes, yes, I'm sorry. Um, permit me to explain. Lady Edelgard, you are fearless. I look up to you as an example to follow. And that explains it. How? I decided to watch you from a distance, to learn from you. But your presence is, um, intimidating. I got more and more scared until I finally couldn't help but try to hide. Uh, forgive me, I threw myself upon your mercy. Honestly. Look. Nobody is truly fearless. Even I have things that I'm afraid of. What? You do? You seem oddly overjoyed at the thought. No, of course not. But, um, what in the world could possibly frighten you? The sea. I find the pitch black of the open sea at night quite frightening. I can't swim, so if the sea were to wash me away, I fear I would never return. The sea? I... 
think I may have seen it once. Maybe. I didn't know you couldn't swim. That's a surprise. Again, my shortcomings delight you. Everyone has fears as well as things they can't do. How many times must I tell you? <laughs> I really did make you angry! <laughs> This is fascinating. Following this equation... Linhart! Here again, I see. Go away, Hubert. Now is not a good time. Ah, yes. The double line becomes a helix, and its arc... No, that cannot be correct. Now is exactly the time. Lady Edelgard requests your presence. Come. The lecture is about to start. Politely inform her that my research is vastly more important than whatever it is she has to say. While your passion may be admirable, it is sadly misdirected. This matter takes priority. Return to your hobby when your duty is done. Hobby? This research will most certainly prove useful in the future. The Empire requires you to be useful now. I should think you would want the same. You have an almost unparalleled intellect, a singular focus, an unfettered imagination. In truth, you have talents that many, including myself, will never have the privilege of possessing. Are you complimenting me, Hubert? That alone deserves to be studied. Let me finish. I haven't an ounce of respect for the cause you have chosen to waste your talents on, which changes frequently, I might add, with no rhyme, reason, or results. Learn to apply yourself to something constructive. You may still have a bright future. That sounds suspiciously as if you're not going to leave me alone. I just want to live a life doing things that interest me. Is that so wrong? That is unacceptable. Even for a nobleman. Her Highness will soon ascend the throne. She's attempting to deal with such noble privilege head on. You have a point, and I understand where you're coming from. But I can't do it. I can't bring myself to work for someone else. Pathetic. Keep to your books, then. Goodbye, Linhart. <laughs> Abyss? You're interested in that place, are you? Ancient sprawling remains deep below Garrick Mach. That's Abyss. Some folks have made their home there. Obviously, they all have their reasons and tales to tell. But only the most enterprising merchant would venture near it. My advice? Avoid going there yourself. What? Hey! 
that's it. I hear that Lord Lenoff, he already had. Eh. I knew I could count on you. A lost item. You should spar with her. She's strong. Train, you really are. Studying here so I could be the best there is, just like Captain Gerald. Do you think I've got it in me to be a top-tier mercenary professor? I'm going to work a lot harder than all the fancy nobles. Oh, that's mine! Thanks so much for finding it. Hey, I hope we get a chance to practice. I know I'm in a different class, but... My central duty as a noble is to protect- I abhor those like Lord Lenato, who deliberately shatter the peace. Utterly disgraceful. You have a kind soul, Professor. Now I feel a little sheepish for showing. Teach, there's some minor noble rebelling in Fargus, right? Huh? Are you going along to help? It is a noble's duty to abuse of that kind is no better than slavery. But precisely why true nobility. It would seem that your reputation. It's a shame I am not in your class, but I. Yeah. Catherine has invited me to train with her. How much do you think I should train before I'm ready to train with someone? Bye. 
even within the night, why not seek her out as How did you know this was mine? Thank you, my teacher. Sounds fun! Let me show you my cooking talent. A little more secret spice and...
What do you require? Do you want to hire this battalion? You can rely on us. Do you want to hire this battalion? Hey, it's the new boss. Farewell. What? Must try harder. Completely unreasonable. How will I see to this? Hubie, what are you doing here? A routine matter. No cause for concern. Ah, so it's something to do with AD then. And? She really is all you ever think about, isn't she? Look, I know you're doing all this so that she'll like you, but if you go too far, she'll end up pushing you away. Maybe even hate you. This has nothing to do with swaying Lady Edelgard's sentiments. I am simply her humble servant. I do what is in her best interest. Whether she cares for me or not is irrelevant. It really doesn't look that way to me. I bet you'd follow any order Aidy gave if you thought it would make her like you. Am I right? Any order? <laughs> what a thing to suggest. But the answer is no. I will decline any directive that I deem would not be beneficial to her. Is that right? 
So, just for example, if Aidy commanded you to find yourself a suitable wife, would you do it? If it would benefit her in some way for me to marry, then yes, I would marry. Mm, it's easy to say that now, with no bridal party in sight. But if it was the day of the wedding? Nah, I don't believe that. I don't care what you believe. My only wish is to see Lady Edelgard fulfill her ambitions. All other matters pale in comparison. Hubie, pale in comparison? You've seen too many operas. I don't think you understand how the world works, at all. And I don't care what you think, either. I would make any sacrifice to support Lady Edelgard. It's a shame you've never experienced such devotion. You're right. I don't have anyone like that right now. But maybe someday I will. Then maybe someday you'll understand. Until then, we will never see eye to eye. Now, if you will excuse me, I have much to do. Hubie, I don't get you. Although I do find your point of view just fascinating. <laughs> Dorothea, the dining hall seems so much brighter with you here. Thirty, I must say you are quite adept with flattery. Please, give me some more. Flattery? No, I was not... <sighs> there you go with that attitude again. Why do you reserve such cold treatment for me and me alone? Do you hate me, Dorothea? Or have you some other reason to avoid my company? I underestimated you. I assumed your noble upbringing had dulled your perception. But you got it right on your first try. I hate you. Huh, I was right. Might I ask why you find me so despicable? I can scarcely guess. Don't waste another minute thinking about it. That will not do. I do not think you would hate a person for no reason. Hmm, perhaps. How's this? If you can guess why, I'll let you know if you're right. The brains of us common folk are so simple, it should be pretty easy for a big shot noble to sort out. <sighs> Very well. I cannot walk away from a challenge. I have no choice but to chance a guess. You are always making fun, calling me a big shot and so forth. Perhaps you think all nobles are... No, it cannot be that simple. Oh? <laughs> what can't be that simple? Uh, please, will you not give me a clue? Well, let me see. A good clue? I know. It's because you're like a bee. That ought to be enough of a clue. So long, Ferdy. A bee? I haven't the slightest. Perhaps because I am such a diligent worker? <laughs> Petra, industrious as ever, I see. Hello, Hubert. Yes, I am trying to be industrious. I must be working hard to improve my position. Right now, it is not a good one. Even accounting for that, your efforts are impressive. I wish a little of you would rub off on certain people here. One troublesome slouch in particular. Rub? I will not be rubbing on anyone. Not literally. I never would have imagined you would adjust so well to life in Fodlan. When I first met you, you couldn't understand a single word of the language. You had the look of a cornered animal. So much so, I thought you'd grown up in the wild. I had more youth then, and the experience was terrifying. My grandfather ordered me to go to Fodlan with suddenness. I was stolen to a strange land filled with strange people. The treatment I was receiving was like... like I was a strange beast. It is unfortunate, but while you were called our guest, you were actually a hostage. You were meant to be insurance that Brigid would not restore its alliance with Dagda and attack us. The Empire required leverage, and after all, you are the Princess of Brigid. It gave me sadness to leave my home. 
but I am not unhappy that I came to the Empire. I have learned much understanding from the outside world. My experience has made me become who I am. And meeting you and Lady Edelgard has had great value for me. I admire your spirit in the face of adversity. You set a strong example to follow. <laughs> and there is much more adversity to come. Petra, would you pause a moment? Yes? Are you wanting something? I was observing your spear work, and I wonder if you don't think your transitions are sloppy. The way you move your arm before a strong thrust hinders your movement and slows your spear on its way back. It leaves a rather large opening. Which arm? My left or right? I think the right... No, actually it's both. It's something about the way you move your elbows. I am not understanding. Can you show me, please? Demonstrate? No, I'd hate to get sweat all over my book. But I must correct this. Please. Or are you unable to do, and you can only teach? I am more of a theorist than a practitioner. I advise and you implement. Very simple. Then... Please advise again. It's all quite simple. Sometimes you make a big stab downwards, right? Before that, you lift up. At that point, you sort of let the tension go and stop. It ruins the momentum of the stab. How can I be lifting up with no... no unnecessary moving? It's the arm movement that's extraneous. Calculate the locus of the spear and the elasticity of the muscles. Locus? Elasticity? Can you not just be showing me? Please. If you are showing me, I will learn it with quickness. I won't waste your time with such demonstrations. You're a smart one, Petra. You'll sort it out. Besides, I need to go now. I have a prior appointment to keep. Linhardt only likes talking. It is on myself to prevail. <laughs> How are you doing? Getting used to life here? I am settled. Everyone shows great kindness. I'm glad to hear it. I was so surprised when you first arrived. A princess all the way from Bridget. You have my gratitude. But please do not call me princess. You are making my cheeks blush. There's nothing to blush about. You're every little girl's dream of what a princess should be. Anyhow, I suppose it's been a long time since you've been back to Bridget, hasn't it? I hope you aren't homesick. Maybe we can cook one of your favorite dishes from back home. I do wish for that. But there is no possibility. The ingredients are not found here. I suppose you're right. That's probably why they don't cook the food of Bridget in the dining hall. I'm sorry. I just got to thinking about how hard it must be to live somewhere so far away from home and... No. It can't be impossible. I'll fix you a real meal of Bridget. I'll just find a recipe and similar ingredients. Wait, Dorothea. It is the thinking that counts. But your cooking is... What is the word? Horrendous. That is what everyone is saying anyway. Horrendous? Nobody's cooking can be that bad. The thinking is enough for me. You have my biggest gratitude. Fine, I'll do something instead of cooking for you. I just want to be sure that you feel at home here. How about a massage? That may help you loosen up. I have no problems. My body is already able to relax. Oh? Then perhaps I could sing you lullabies to help you sleep. I'm not having sleeping trouble. Just know that you never have to worry about putting me out. I like helping my friends. Well then, I must be going, but... Remember my offer. Dorothea is filling my heart full. Oh, I do believe a nap is in order. Ah, oh, this is lovely. 
<sighs> Just feel that breeze. Dorothea, whatever are you doing here? I was thinking of relaxing here, but it looks as if someone else is lounging in my spot already. Taking a nap in public like this? Really, Lynn. The nobles look down on such behavior. You do know I am of noble birth. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm just teasing. You never do act very noble, though. Why is that? Each person must follow their own way. This is how I prefer to live. Even if some of the more pretentious nobles like to poke fun at my ways. Doesn't that bother you? I mean, really? It doesn't hurt your pride or anything? What use is pride? It doesn't feed nor clothe you. It offers no warmth on a cold night. First time I've heard a noble say something like that. Well, most nobles are... Oh, what is the polite way to say it? Fools. Yes, they are fools. As for myself, my father is the Minister of Domestic Affairs, and he has pride enough for the both of us. For example, did you know he and the Minister of Military Affairs cannot get along, although they value each other greatly? His pride gets in the way, so he can't make amends. That is why there is discord between civil ministers and military officers in the Empire. And so pride serves no good purpose in politics, either. So tell me, what use is it? I wonder if bad blood between civil and military leaders is somewhat unavoidable. The Minister of Domestic Affairs is in charge of all civil officials, so if they just give in easily, their subordinates would lose respect, right? I get the feeling that if your pride isn't equal to the responsibility you bear, then you aren't fit to lead. Also, I happen to think pride can be quite charming. And how necessary is charm? It just gets in the way of living your life. If you lack charm, nobody will give you a second glance. Right. Which means more time for napping. Lynn, you can't really believe what you're saying, can you? Thank you. 